Hello, uh, my name is Ray Smith. I'm a Sunday school teacher here at Austin Grove. Uh, in my Sunday school class, we are uh, in a study of the book of Romans. Uh, and today we're gonna be in chapter four, uh, verses 17 through 21. Uh, in continuous of this, uh, this study that we've been doing uh, and the way that, that we're all having to do this, uh, this Bible school right now. Uh, <laughs> But we'll get into it. We'll go ahead and we're going to read uh, uh, verses 17 through 21, uh, and then we'll come back and we'll we'll see what Paul has for us uh, in in each one of these verses. Again, that's uh, Romans chapter four, verses 17 through 21. Uh, it starts off in parentheses uh, uh, from the preceding verse, uh, verse 16, uh, starting in verse 17 in parentheses. It says. As it is written, I have made you a father of many nations in the presence of him who he believed, God, who gives life to the dead and calls those things which do not exist as though they did, who contrary to hope and hope believed, so that he became the father of many nations according to what was spoken, so shall your descendants be. And not being weak in faith, he did not consider his own body already dead, since he was about a hundred years old. And the deadness of Sarah's womb, he did not waver at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strengthened in faith, giving glory to God, and being fully convinced that what he had promised, he was able to perform. Uh, I love talking about Abraham. Uh, you know, this, this, I love the story of Abraham. It's really a, it, when you get into the Bible, uh, uh, Genesis is really easy reading when you get into the story of Abraham and the actual people that lived uh, uh, during these times uh, and the, the encounters that uh, Abraham in particular had with God. Uh, I mean, it's just amazing. It's, it's hard to put it down. It's a, it's a wonderful story. Uh, that, I mean, it really is hard to get enough of. Uh, and I think that's why Paul, uh, at least one of the reasons why Paul picks out Abraham uh, to talk about. I mean, Abraham was their patriarch. He was the start of the, uh, the nation of Israel. Uh, and all of the Jews, I mean, all of them would have been proud to call Abraham their father. Uh, now we start in verse 17. We'll go back. And like I said, the first part of it, uh, starts in parenthesis, uh, going back to verse 16 that we studied last week. Uh, and it says, as it is written, I have made you a father of many nations. Uh, and the parenthesis ends. And then it says, in the presence of him uh, whom he believed, God, who gives life to the dead and calls those things which do not exist as though they did. Uh, now to confirm uh the fatherhood of Abraham uh, over all true believers. Uh, Paul injects uh, Genesis 17, uh, chapter 17, verse 5 here, uh, showing that even though God did make Israel his chosen people, uh, his earthly people, uh, it didn't mean that his grace uh, and mercy would be confined to them alone. Uh, and I love this. Uh, Paul's, Paul's, I mean, I don't know how often we really consider this, but uh, how important Paul's study under Gamaliel really was. Uh, because Paul's from Tarsus. Uh, Gamaliel, uh, part of the Sanhedrin, uh, and we learned that in Acts, part of the Sanhedrin would have been in Jerusalem. So at some point, Paul must have come from Tarsus to study under Gamaliel. And uh, Gamaliel... Uh, uh, according to Jewish tradition, uh, is considered uh, one of the greatest rabbis uh, by the Jewish people. And that's even today. I think his, uh, he was the grandson of Hallel. I think I'm saying that right. Uh, they even go so far as to say that uh, Gamaliel was, uh, was one of the first to be called Rabon, uh, which was an uh, 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 exalted form of, of teacher. Uh, high teacher, maybe. Uh, he was one of seven and he was the first. Uh, it is also said that love of the law died when Gamaliel died. 
a love for the law died when he did. Uh, so Gamaliel, uh, we learn very little about him in scripture, but he was very, very important. Uh, and uh, no wonder Paul, uh, you know, when he's, he's talking about his, his credits about being a Jew, I studied under the feet of Gamaliel. Uh, he's proud of that. Uh, and I think, you know, we should, uh, we should thank God for that as well because Paul's uh, study under Gamaliel uh, had really prepared him uh, to be able to quote the Old Testament uh, with pinpoint precision. Uh, and he quotes uh, in, in his epistles, he quotes verse after verse after verse from the Old Testament uh, to show that it was always God's intention to honor faith wherever he found it. Uh, now we get to uh, the phrase where it says, in the presence of him who believed, this continues the thought, the parenthesis has ended uh, with the uh, father of many nations. This continues the thought from verse 16 uh, about Abraham being the father to us all. Uh, and the connection, it, it goes like this. Abraham is the father of us all in the sight of him, that's God, whom he, that's Abraham, believed. Uh it says, uh, God who gives life to the dead and calls those things which do not exist as though they did. To understand this verse, uh, like I said, we only have to, to think about the story of Abraham and Sarah. Uh, go back to that verse. I mean, we know you talk about Abraham and Sarah, you know they had trouble having kids. Uh, Sarah wanted kids so bad, uh, she, <laughs> she made uh, quite a big mistake uh, with Hagar. Uh, a mistake that is still being felt in the world today is those those countries, uh, uh, Israel and uh, and and the, pal the Arab nations uh, surrounding Israel uh, are still fighting uh, today. So I mean, she they wanted kids bad uh, together. Uh, Abraham did get Ishmael later on uh, through Sarah's maid Hagar, but. I mean, he wanted he wanted kids with his wife, Sarah. Uh, I mean, it says God gives life to the dead. Uh, now, while Abraham and Sarah were not physically dead, uh, they were old, uh, and they were physically beyond the age of being able to produce children or to have children with each other. You can find that in Genesis chapter 18, verse 11. And you can also find it in the next couple of verses we're gonna read here in Romans chapter four, verse 19. Uh, it says, uh, gives life to the dead. God gave Abraham and Sarah life in the form of their son, Isaac. He gave them life that they never, they never could have hoped for. Uh, they, they were old. I mean, they were 100 years old and 90, respectively, when Isaac was born. Uh, they, never, they never could have expected that. Uh, the end of the verse, it says, uh, God, he says, God calls those things which do not exist as though they did. Uh, God spoke to Abraham of the nations uh, that would descend from his line uh, as if they already existed. Uh, you can find that in Genesis chapter 17, verses one through eight. And, and one spot that I was able to pick out, uh, there are several others. Uh, he spoke of the land that they would possess as if they already had. Uh, and that's, that's 430 something years after Abraham died. Uh, long, long time. Uh, long, long time after Abraham, uh, would his descendants come to be in the land? Uh, and God spoke about that land as if they already possessed it. Uh, God also spoke about uh, the righteousness of Abraham as if that righteousness was something that Abraham possessed, even though it was God who imputed righteousness to Abraham on account of his faith. It's, I mean, it's, it's amazing. God spoke about all these things and they, 
as if they existed when they, in truth, they didn't. Uh, the righteousness that Abraham possessed was not his own. Uh, it didn't belong to him. God gave it to him for his faith. We move on to verse 18 and it says, who contrary to hope, in hope believed, so that he became the father of many nations according to what was spoken, so shall your descendants be, okay? Uh, in the preceding verses uh, here, Paul has emphasized that the promise came to Abraham by faith, not law, okay? So that it might be by grace and that it might be sure to all the seed. Uh, and this leads to a consideration of Abraham's faith uh, in the God of resurrection. You have to consider that. You have to consider Abraham's faith here uh, because God promised Abraham a posterity as numberless as the sands of the sea and as numberless as the stars in the sky. And we can't, I mean, just thinking about the number, the, the sand in the sea, it just gives me a headache. Thinking about the number of stars that are on the sky, it gives me, I, I, don't, I can't even consider that. It's too much. It's too much. It's hard to think about. Uh, but you consider this from Abraham's point of view. Uh, and I think you'll get a better grasp of what Paul is talking about here. Uh, Abraham was 99 years old. Sarah was 89. And that's when the promise was renewed. That's when the promise was renewed. Uh, in, uh, in Genesis uh, chapter 18, God told him according to the time of life, uh, I'm assuming that means nine months, uh, he and Sarah would have a son. Okay. Uh, now, can you remember the story? What did Sarah do? She laughed. Okay. And kind of got her in a little bit of trouble. Then she, you know, lied to the Lord and said, I didn't laugh. <laughs> uh, we're all you. We're all you. Uh, but I mean, honestly, I would have to. I would have to. Uh, in Abraham's position, I imagine he was. Seriously? No? Really? Uh, but obviously I'm not Abraham. Uh, Abraham took this on faith. I can't imagine what his expression was. Sarah laughed. She's like, ha, yeah, right. After all this time, after all this time, am I finally going to get what I want? Yeah, I remember that promise. Uh, when was that? 25 years ago almost? Yeah, I, I remember when, when my husband told me that. Yeah. Uh, so now... At night, at ninety, uh, or at eighty-nine, uh, for Sarah, and uh, ninety-nine for uh, Abraham. Uh, humanly speaking, uh, the chances of uh, her having a child at ninety—that's <laughs> utterly hopeless. That's not going to happen. Uh, Start of the verse says, contrary to hope. Contrary to hope. Abraham, in hope, believed. Uh, he believed in hope. Everything about our, uh, our common sense, uh, about Abra Abraham's common sense, about how life worked, told him that he was too old to have kids. Sarah had not been able to get pregnant uh, the entire time they had been married. Uh, and now she's she's pushing 90 years old. Common sense tells us she's not going to get pregnant now. Uh, not Abraham. Uh, Abraham, in hope, believed that he would become the father of many nations, just as God had promised him in Genesis chapter 15, verse 5. It's amazing. It's amazing. He just took it. Okay, this is what's going to happen. All right. Great, awesome, uh, and praises God, praises God. Uh, verse 19, I love this. And not being weak in faith, he did not consider his own body, already dead, since he was about 100 years old, and the deadness of Sarah's womb. Uh, when the, like I said, when the promise was first made to Abraham uh, of a great prosperity, posterity he was 75 years old in genesis you can find that in genesis chapter 12 verses 2 through 4 uh 
at which time he was still physically able to become a father. Okay, We know this because it's after that that Ishmael uh, was conceived with uh, Sarai, his maid. Uh, you can find that in Genesis chapter 16, verses 1 through 11. Uh, however, in this verse, Paul is talking about a time much later, almost 25 years later. Uh, Abraham was almost 100, and God renewed his promise to Abraham. Uh, like I said, it's in Genesis chapter 17, verse 15 through 21. Abraham had, had aged almost 25 years now, uh, and so had Sarah. So had Sarah. Uh, the possibility of having a child naturally, and when I say naturally, I don't mean the not having a C-section. I mean naturally through uh, without divine intervention, without God's divine uh putting his divine hand on there and making this happen without that. I mean, the possibility of that was, uh, it, it wasn't even in the realm of possibility. Uh, you couldn't even consider it. Couldn't even consider it. Uh, and I love the way this verse starts. It says, and not being weak in faith. That just blows my mind. Cause I think about it the way I would look at it. Uh, because when somebody tells me they're going to do something for me, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm not very patient. My wife will attest to that. Uh, so I won't, let's go. Now, if you don't do something for any more, do it now. Let's go. Uh, we're talking about 25 years. 25 years had passed since the first promise and no kids with Sarah. How would you have responded to this? Uh, would you have been bitter over the fact that uh, God had promised this and 25 years later, still no dice. He still hadn't delivered 25 years later. Would you have been upset about that? You know, hey God, you know, you told me this 25 years ago, it still hadn't happened, what are we waiting on? Uh, I know I know that's, uh, I love to think that I would have the faith that, that, that Abraham had and I would have the reaction that Abraham had. Uh, I don't think I would have. Uh, it's a nice thought, and I, I'd love to think highly of myself. I'm pretty sure I wouldn't have that idea. I'm pretty sure, you know, there'd be some, some, you know, at least some pouting. At least some pouting. You know, God, you told me you were going to do this. And you hadn't done it yet. I mean, I just don't, I don't know. You know, are you going to do this? You're not going to do this. Uh, I don't think that I'm stupid enough to get angry with God and be like, you know, hey, what's, what's the holdup? Uh, but I, definitely there would be some pouting. Uh, maybe, maybe try to get a little bit of a guilt trip in there. Uh, not Abraham, not Abraham. Uh, yeah, I mean, I would have been like, you know, look, I'm a hundred years old now. I can't be chasing around little kids. Uh, my wife is only 35. And let me tell you something. If she found out she was pregnant today, she would be bawling. She would be bawling, uh, upset. Uh, but I'm still praying. Uh, I need that little girl. I only got three little boys right now. I need that little girl. So, uh, but I mean, at, at a certain point in your life, you know, I mean, Abraham is, you know, now is the time that I'm going to have kids. Uh, Ishmael was almost 12 years old now, 12 to 13 years old. Now I'm gonna, we're doing diapers again, really? Uh, not Abraham. Not Abraham. Uh, it says he did not consider his own body, which was already dead. Uh, or basically what, what he's trying to say here is that he's incapable now of producing offspring. Uh, nor the deadness of Sarah's womb. And this could be talking about Sarah's never been able to have kids. Or it could be talking about, you know, Sarah's just as old as you are, dude. Uh, I mean, the, the deadness of her womb. She had never, she had never had a kid. Uh, she's 89 years old now. Uh, if what you say is true, then nine months from now, when she's 90, she's going to be having kids. Really? Uh, I mean, I don't, I don't know what the oldest someone, 
in, in modern times is it's had a child. I know they're, I know it's getting older and older, but I don't think anybody 90 years old has had a child uh, that I can remember. I'm pretty sure that would have made the news. And even though I don't watch much news, I think I, I think I would have heard about that. Uh, but you know, I mean, Abraham he doesn't consider the fact that that he and his wife are both beyond the age of childbearing. Uh, human, humanly speaking, uh, having kids at their age uh, was impossible. Couldn't happen. Okay, but what what I think Paul is trying to point out here is that Abraham knew God wasn't speaking in human terms. Okay, uh, he knew that his God, his God, because uh, we can't forget that there was a lot of different so-called deities, little, little G gods back during that time. Abraham knew that his God was absolutely capable of doing exactly what he said he would do. Abraham had faith. He believed without doubt, without reservation, that what God said would happen, would happen. We move on to verse 20. It says, he did not waver at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strengthened in faith, giving glory to God. The um, impossibility of the promise at this point didn't make Abraham's faith waver at the promise of God. And I can't, I can't claim that. I can't claim that. Uh, I, I, I'm a, it's got to be true because it's here in Scripture, and this is this is living truth here. Uh, every word in this book is true, so it's got to be true that Abraham's faith didn't waver. Do you think that at almost a hundred years old, you would say, "Oh, I'm going to have a kid"? Okay, you'd be like, "Yeah, right. Yeah, right. You've lost your mind." Uh, just like we all would. Abraham's faith didn't waver at this promise. Uh, as far as Abraham was concerned, God had said it. Abraham believed it. And that was the end of the discussion. That's that. God said it was going to happen. I believe it's going to happen. That's the end. It's amazing. It's amazing. Uh, In Abraham's eyes, there was only one impossibility. There was only one impossibility concerning God in Abraham's eyes. And that was that God could lie. The only impossibility that Abraham could consider was that God could lie to him. It's amazing. Abraham's faith was strong, and hearing the promise again after nearly 25 years didn't make him wonder what was taking so long, but he was strengthened in the faith, giving glory to God. Giving glory to God. Instead of showing doubt, uh, because even at 75, 75 is old. Uh, 75, 75 is elderly now. Okay, 75 is past the age where you want to consider having kids. Uh, and my wife's in the back shaking her head. So, you're not at 75 yet, don't you worry. Uh, it didn't make him waver. Okay, uh, instead of showing that doubt, Abraham praised God. It's, what does what it say? He gave glory to God giving glory to God. He strengthened in his faith, giving glory to God. He was honoring God as the only one who could be counted on to fulfill uh, his promise. Despite all of these facts we've been talking about, Abraham's 100 years old, Sarah's uh, 90 years old, despite of all this stuff, in defiance of these things, of all of the laws that you and I would consider, you know, I mean, a woman should not be having a baby at this age. It's very, very dangerous. They're both going to die. Uh, no, I mean, you know, they say today, grandparents are fit to raise kids. 
There's a reason for that. Uh, you get to that age, uh, Abraham, in, in defiance of all this, he knew that God could do this uh, despite the laws of chance, probability, whatever. Uh, the laws of the, of the natural world that God created, he knew that God could make this happen. In verse 21, it says, and being fully convinced that what he had promised, he would be able to perform. Abraham had no idea how God would do this. Uh, and quite frankly, how God was going to do this to Abraham was inconsequential. Didn't matter. It didn't matter. Don't care how you do it. Don't. I probably wouldn't understand if you explained it to me. It doesn't matter. All I know is that you said you're going to do it, and you're going to do it. Uh, fully convinced, there's no doubt. Fully convinced. It's, a, it's amazing to me uh, that he had the relationship with God and the knowledge of God at this time. Uh, that even, a, even after 25 years since the first promise, he still, he's fully convinced that what God had promised, he would also be able to perform. That's, I mean, that's amazing to me. Uh, and in one way, that is a, uh, that's a remarkable, remarkable show of faith uh, on Abraham's part. Uh, and as I was reading this today, uh, you know, I, I hadn't considered this uh, before because I always just, just thought about that, uh, is that's Abraham's faith. That's a remarkable show of faith. Amazing. Uh, but in, in one of the commentaries I was reading today, they put it another way. They were like, you know, it's, it, it is a remarkable show of faith, but on the other hand, this is the most logical and reasonable thing Abraham could have done. And I, I hadn't considered that before, but you know, I mean, the God of the universe, uh, I mean, Almighty God, the way Abraham describes him as God Most High, God Most High. You remember we talked, there's little, little G gods. Uh, Abraham wants to make a point of my God is the highest God. So, God Most High had told Abraham something would happen. So if you think about it from that from that point point of view, Abraham did what the most logical, reasonable person would expect. He believed God Almighty, Creator of the universe, heaven and earth. He believed that God would do exactly what God said he would do. It's only what, I mean, a, a reasonable person would assume. This is God we're talking about. Uh, as, far as, as far as Abraham was concerned here, uh, God had told Abraham something would happen. And Abraham knew that if God said something would happen, then whatever God said would happen is exactly what would occur. That's Abraham's faith. There's no doubt here. There's no doubt here. And this is, I mean, it's reading, reading uh, these verses and doing my study today, it's the faith that we're, that we're uncovering right here. There, there's no room for doubt here. Uh, I, I like how it says at the start of this verse, fully convinced. Fully convinced. There wasn't doubt. Now, what about you and me? Uh, could you and I say the same thing? Fully convinced. Fully convinced. Is there a doubt? Uh, especially in what the, wor the world's going through right now with the, uh, the coronavirus, is there a doubt? Have you heard anybody say, I wonder what God's doing? Uh, have you heard somebody question? I have. I have. <laughs> Unfortunately. Uh, it's not an easy argument to take up. Uh, but it is one that you need to shoulder. I mean, God knows exactly what he's doing. Uh, and, and like Michael said uh, uh, two weeks ago in his service, I'm not saying that God caused this. Uh, I am saying that he can use this. He can use uh, anything. Anything. God can use that. Uh, the challenge for us 
the challenge for us today is showing the same faith that Abraham showed you. The same faith that Paul is talking about, that Paul wants us to see here. The faith of Abraham that, that was fully convinced. Not just right when God made the promise. 25 years after God made the promise, God mentions it again. He, he basically removes it and Abraham says, okay, awesome. There, there's no room for doubt here. It's, that's absolutely amazing to me. I can't, uh, I mean, it's it, the, the way we question God today, the way we uh, wonder if God knows what he's doing today in our, in our society, you know, uh, I, it's hard for me to fully, fully comprehend the faith here that Abraham is displaying. Uh, and that's what I would have you, you think on, uh, after this lesson, think on, think on Abraham's faith and see where your faith is in, com in comparison. Uh, and I'll be brutally honest with you. My faith is, is far short, uh, of that. Uh, and I'm ashamed to admit that, uh, my faith that I mean, fully convinced. Wow. Uh, because I'm terribly impatient. Uh, even now after, after six, seven months now of, of the virus and everything being weird in our country, you know, I'm like, what, what are we waiting on? Uh, you know, I catch myself doing that and I, it, you know, I have to stop and remind myself, God has this. He, he don't need my help. How arrogant is that? God needs my help. I mean, that, that's laughable. Uh, that, that the creator of the universe could need anything from me. He knows what he's doing. And we need to show Abraham's kind of faith. We'll end here uh, tonight uh, and we'll pick up next week in verse 22, uh, which will carry us into chapter five uh, next week. Uh, I think, pretty sure we'll get into chapter five next week. Uh, but we'll close with prayer today. I appreciate you coming back. Please uh, check out all the stuff we've got going on here at Austin Grove. Uh, we are in service again. Uh, check our website for the bulletin uh, and any of the related activities we're doing here now uh, and the stuff that we've got online. Uh, thank you for, for being with us today. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you uh, for this day, Father. We thank you for everything you give us. We thank you for Paul, Father. Uh, we thank you for Paul's education uh, under, under Gamaliel. Uh, that, that, that led him to be able to pull back uh, and, and quote with, with such accuracy the Old Testament, Father, and bring it, bring it to bear on his, his opponents the way he did, uh, Father, showing us Abraham and Abraham's faith uh, and teaching us what it, what it really means to have a faith like Abraham's. We praise you for that, Father. Uh, you just said you're such an amazing God and it really comes through in the, the verses that we've just read and thinking about the story of Abraham and Sarah father uh, there there are words to praise you properly uh, you, you're just such an amazing God father I thank you for everything that, that you've given us Lord the many blessings that you've bestowed upon us father uh, we ask for your continued guidance and help in the struggles that our country and the world are going through right now, Father. Uh, but we know that you've got things well in hand. You've got this, and we understand that, Lord. We praise you for being that kind of God. It, it, it amazes us, Father. It amazes me. I, I can't understand it. I can't fathom it, Father, but I know it's true. I know that that's the God you are. I ask you to be with us all throughout the coming week. Uh, bring us to people that need to hear your word, Father, and give us the words to, to speak uh, in your name. Protect us from error, Lord. We don't want to, we don't want to speak error in your name, Father. Uh, help us with that, Lord. Keep us safe. Keep us healthy, Father. Until we're able to come back here next week and meet again uh, in fellowship uh, in your house, in your name, Father, uh, as believers, so that we can take what we learn out into the world. All these things we ask in the name above all other names, Jesus. Amen. Thank you. Hey, y'all.